Let's bring in former Democratic senator from North Dakota, Byron Dorgan, who just this Monday endorsed Hillary Clinton. He's joined by former Republican governor from Vermont, Jim Douglas, who has been a, a supporter, of course, in the past of Governor John Kasich. Um, I, I want to start with you, uh, Senator Byron Dorgan. And as we look at what's happening in North Dakota and we await this, do you think Donald Trump will be able to win over the energy industry? And we're talking about the fossil fuel energy industry to start here, because that's what really has a hold in North Dakota. Well, I think he'll do well in Bismarck. I mean, you know, the North, North Dakotans treat everybody with respect. And so uh, I'm glad he made the stop in Bismarck. I, you know, look, we have had uh, energy abundance. We went from scarcity to abundance in a very short period of time in recent years. And that's good for our country. Um, you know, there's a, obviously Donald Trump also carries a lot of baggage in other areas because in North Dakota, I've run in 12 statewide elections. And we treat adversaries with respect. He uses terms like loser, liar, low life, and so on. It's, uh, it's the wrong way to campaign, in my judgment. In mm -hmm. addition to that, I may just say I, I have trouble getting past the notion of his proposals. Let's give uh, South Korea nuclear weapons. Let's ban all Muslims. Let's uh, increase the deficit by about $10 trillion with mm -hmm. tax cuts that he wouldn't pay for. So, I mean, there are a lot of issues out there. Let's repeal the regulations on Wall Street. Uh, so a lot of issues that we need to talk about between now and Election Day. Well, perhaps, and, and you know, as we await this energy speech, Governor Douglas, I, I think Senator Dorgan makes, makes a point that, you know, there's a lot of sizzle with Donald Trump. People are still looking for the stake, certainly with the energy policy. He has said that domestic coal consumption, uh, he wants to get the coal miners back to work. But people are using less coal for a couple of reasons. Among them, natural gas is so unbelievably cheap. It burns cleaner than coal. So there seems to be a shift. And so what will you be looking for in this energy policy uh, rollout that Donald Trump is supposed to put here? Balance, first and foremost. I think the American people are looking for a, an energy policy that's comprehensive, that includes uh, all sources. Uh, you're certainly right, Liz, that uh, natural gas is uh, coming on strong now. We're expanding its use in Vermont, and, and that's the case in other places as well. So I think he's doing what he has to do, which is to reach out to organizations, interests, uh, groups that uh, he'll need to put together in order to, uh, to assemble a winning coalition. Well, here's what he said just minutes ago about Hillary Clinton and her coal plan, which is to, of course, as she has said, put coal out of business. Let's listen. The federal government, the regulations that they have, they put the coal miners out of business. The coal mines are shut. Uh, what they've done to the coal, what Hillary Clinton, she's worse than Obama. She wants to, I mean, she actually openly said, I want to put the coal miners out of business. I want to put the coal mines out of business. Essentially, she's saying, I want to put the steel mills out of business. We're not going to have any businesses left. Senator Dorgan, well, uh, Donald Trump yeah. has also said that he would undo President Obama's climate change policies. Uh, yeah. You've been a senator. You've watched how the sausage is made. How easy or difficult is it to undo what is already in place? Not, not very easy. And let me just say, clean air is an asset. We all breathe this air. Clean air is an asset, not a liability. And you made a point a moment ago that's so important, as did the governor. The fact is, it's not Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton that causes a problem for coal. It is natural gas. Uh, the pricing of natural gas has had a profound impact of moving fuel sources from coal to natural but, but gas. To and be I don't fair, see it moving back To quickly. be fair, because we're fair and balanced, uh, sure. this administration has made it very difficult with heavy, heavy regulation on the coal industry. But I just wanted to make that point. Go ahead. But, but my point is this conversion started well before the, the, uh, the plan that was proposed by the mm -hmm. EPA and the administration. The, the fact is the market system is what's making the judgments here moving from coal to natural gas. And it is the case that our country wants to have cleaner air. Uh, we're going to have a carbon-reduced uh, future. There's no question about that. Carbon restraint is going to be part of our future and part of the future of the planet as well. We there can, are some deniers, but uh, yeah, well, the yeah. deniers, it, it just doesn't work. Well, Governor Douglas, as a Republican, uh, you, you know, look, there are people who, who are not there yet on, on climate change. I, I think part of the issue with Donald Trump that some people are, are a little concerned about, and I'm talking about specifically the energy industry, all you have to do is look at how much they've donated. Uh, there's an interesting... A donation queue up here, and it appears that the oil and gas interests have donated just under $13,000 so far to Donald Trump's campaign. This is according to the Nonpartisan Center for Responsible Politics. But look what they've given Hillary Clinton, 332000 81000 plus for, for Senator Sanders. 
Uh, this is, looks like severe pushback that the oil and gas interests are not ready to jump on the Trump train. What can he say today that might change that? Well, uh, he certainly is doing the right thing by reaching out. But remember, Liz, he hasn't raised much money from anybody. He's been self-funding the campaign substantially. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it will come. You indicated at the top of the, uh, of the piece that a couple of uh, major uh, oil uh, executives or, or yeah, uh, industry Carol leaders Hammond, have uh, endorsed Pickens. him. Yeah, so I, I think uh, I think it'll come. Uh, in the end, uh, there'll be some warming toward uh, Mr. Trump. He's got a ways to go. Uh, he's got a ways to go even among uh, uh, those who are, are solidly Republican. He's got to tone down his rhetoric and uh, not say inflammatory things about Republican governors, for example. Um, but uh, this is the beginning of a process, and I think now that he's got the numbers, according to the AP, uh, the inevitability will, will be accepted by okay. more people. You haven't yet, but will you endorse him? Um, well, I don't know. I, I tell folks here in Vermont that our electoral votes are uh, not going to go to the Republican anyway, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. But uh, I've always supported Republican nominees, and um, we'll see how he does over the next five months. Well, we're, we're thrilled to have both of you. Thank you so much. And as we wait the speech, we want to thank Senator Byron Dorgan and Governor Jim Douglas. Thank, thank you, you both very much.